Welcome to the International Broadcast Ministry of No Limits. I am Pastor Delman Coates, and here at No Limits, we want to help strengthen you, encourage you, and empower you to feel God's love and to live your life without limitation. Today's message is about to begin, and I want to thank you for watching and know that I'm praying for you to hear a special word from God as you watch. try to reflect today on the announcement to Mary in Luke chapter 1 that she's got something on the inside of her that God wants to birth from her. It's in Luke chapter 1 verses uh, 28 through 38 where the word of the Lord reads as follows. The angel came to Mary and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you, but she was much perplexed by the words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Somebody say favor, favor. And now you will conceive in your womb and will bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He's going to be great. You've got, some, you've got greatness inside of you. Tell your neighbor, you've got greatness. Come on, tell your neighbor, you've got greatness inside of you. He will be great. He'll be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And in his, his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel sent by God, how can this be since I'm a virgin? And the angel said, don't worry about it. We got it. We got that. We got that. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. In other words, it's not your doing. It's going to be totally God's doing. And therefore, the child that will be born is going to be a holy child. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age is also going to conceive a son. This is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Once again, verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. And I just want to try to preach today, church, with your help, but more importantly, from the Lord's, with the Lord's permission from the thought, it's still possible. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I don't know what you're looking for, but it's still possible. Look at the one on the other side, smile at him behind your mask, saying, neighbor, Oh, neighbor, I don't know what you're waiting for, but it's still possible. Come on, put those blessed hands together and give the Lord praise. You know, the other day, I was reading a very interesting article regarding the Prairie View University Panthers, who back in the 90s set a record that might stand forever. Between 1989 and 1998, the Prairie View University football team lost 80 straight games, setting the longest streak in the history of college football. Near, near, and, and, and nearly one decade later, and 80 games after 80 games had gone by, there was not one victory for the football team. And what was interesting is that surprisingly, even though, even in the midst of all of the losses, the Prairie View University Panther fans kept coming to the football games. Can you imagine that? 10 years, not one win, and the fans kept showing up to the football games. It was 
an interesting thing because typically fans stay home when their team is not winning. Typically, fans stay home when things are not going the way that they desired, but not these fans. They kept coming. They kept supporting each home game, even though they had not won a game in nine to ten seasons. Until finally, after almost ten years, they won a game against Langston University, the only HBCU in the state of Oklahoma. The score was 14 to 12. And after the game, a reporter asked the head coach, Greg Johnson, why do you think the Panther fans kept coming out knowing that you would probably lose? And his response was very simple. He said, even though we had lost every game for 10 straight years, our fans kept coming because they believed that winning was still possible as we did tonight. Y'all missed it. They felt that had they allowed what happened in the past to keep them at home, they would have missed this momentous moment. And so they kept coming because they did, not, they did not want their future to be dictated by their past. That's what he said. And when I read that, y'all, it blessed me because many people miss what is potentially ahead of them because they get stuck and hung up on what's behind of them behind them they miss what God wants to do because of what has happened in their yesterday. They miss life's wins because of life's losses. They miss the mountain tops because of the valleys. They miss the successes because of life struggles. And I get it. When you've been down for a long time, it has a way of discouraging your spirit and dampening your mood and stealing your joy. And as a result, you give up. You throw in the towel, but you can miss the miracle that God wants you to see and the breakthrough that God wants you to get if you allow what happened in your past dictate and determine your future. But hear this truth today, church. A loss yesterday doesn't mean you can't win today. The philosopher Sean Michael Leonard Anderson, a.k.a. Big Sean, captured it this way. Last night, I took an L, but tonight, I'm bouncing back. In other words, regardless of what has transpired in your yesterday, the script for your tomorrow has yet to be written that it is still possible. A man approached a little league game one afternoon. He asked a boy in the dugout what the score was. And the boy responded, 18 to nothing and we're behind. Boy, the spectator responded, I bet you all are really discouraged. And the boy said, why should I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. <laughs> That's what I want to tell someone today. That regardless of the score in your life, you have not even gotten up to bat yet. This sermon is for those of you who can relate to the Reverend Paul Jones when he said, I've had some good days, I've had some hills to climb, I've had some weary days, and I've had some sleepless nights. This year, someone knows what it's like to have had to cry, to have been let down, to have had bad news you had not anticipated, to have loved ones go home to be with the Lord. Someone listening knows what it's like to have had bills you cannot pay, days where you were so sick you thought that it was the end. And when that happens, the enemy tempts you to stay at home, to have a pity party, and to throw in the towel. But God woke me up at 4.30 this morning to tell you, don't let your situation determine your expectation. <laughs> Problems. No matter how great, don't cancel God's promise. Problems, uh, no matter how large, don't nullify God's plans for your life. The Bible is still true. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, uh, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the great things uh, that God has in store for you, uh, for you, uh, and uh, for you. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you uh, that it's still possible. Whatever you believe in God for, 
is still possible. Your dreams are still possible. Your vision is still possible. Your aspirations are still possible. Your prosperity, your promotion is still possible. Your healing is still possible. Your deliverance is still possible. Your breakthrough, your release, your promotion, your children and your grandchildren getting saved is still possible. Because according to this text, for with God, nothing. Do you know what nothing means? Nothing. Not one thing shall be impossible with God. That's all I came to tell someone today on this second Sunday of Advent. I don't care what has happened in your past. Trust and believe that with God, it can happen. And that's what someone needs to grasp as we enter the celebration and preparation for the birth of our Lord, that the promise that the Lord declared over your life is still possible, that you can be healed from trauma, that you can recover from a setback, that you won't be alone because he left, because he won't leave you, that he'll provide for you, that you can be free from addiction, that you can be free from bondage, that you'll find comfort in grief, that you'll find Feet, find feast, peace when things are chaotic, it is still possible. And this text shows us how you know it's still possible. And you know it's still possible, first of all, when you realize that you've got favor on your life. Somebody say favor. In verse 28, the angel says to Mary, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. The Bible ch ch church says so much about favor, uh, but favor is simply God's unmerited, God's undeserved kindness. It's when God steps into our lives to make an un unimaginable and inexplicable, inexplicable difference in our lives. That's favor. And you know you're favored because as the angel tells Mary, You've got God's presence. You're, you're favored because God is with you. Favor is not, is not as many claim reducible to or just about material prosperity. Favor also does not mean that you will not have trials. It does not mean that troubles will not come your way. But it does mean uh, that God will be on your side. And because of that, God's presence bestows outcomes and benefits that you would have never given gotten on your own. Just a few weeks ago, uh, about 30 or so of us headed to Ghana, West Africa. <laughs> And I was blessed during this trip to be able to take my eldest son, Nathaniel. And I'll never forget that Sunday after church, I believe it was November the 6th, driving from Fort Washington to Dulles. The entire way we were in the Uber, Nathan was worrying that his bag exceeded the limit to go on the plane. He, he, the I listened to him the entire ride from Fort Washington to Dulles Airport talking about how worried his, he was that his bag exceeded 50 pounds. And Nathan is the kind of guy where he's starting to become more responsible and he didn't want to ask me to pay for it. He was, he, was, he was counting his own coins and he was beginning to think about the kind of fees he was going to owe because his bags exceeded 15 pounds. And so when we got to the airport, since I made our ticket reservation, I stepped into the priority line so that Nathan and I could check in. Uh, the lady, she, gave, she asked me on my name. She asked for the, our identification. She gave us our tickets, our boarding pass. She took our bags and placed them on the, ba on the belt. And our bags went through, and we went towards security with no questions. And Nathan was shocked. He was wondering what happened because I know my bags exceeded the 50 pound limit. And he asked me, he said, Daddy, how could that be? How could it that I could get in? And how is it that I could go through because it, when my bags exceeded the limit? I said, Nathan, it's simple. I'm a, pr a priority member on this airline. And when you are priority, the limit is not 50 pounds, it's 75 pounds. And he said, 
said, well, how does that help me? I said, well, you got a benefit and you got access to a privilege because you are traveling with your daddy. Can I tell you something? The reason some of you are still blessed, the reason some of you have what you have, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your intelligence. It has nothing to do with your brilliance, but it has everything to do because of the fact that you are traveling with your daddy. Have I got a witness here? Is there anybody here today who can testify that the job that I have, the home that I have, the health that I have, I've got it because I'm traveling with my daddy. Have I got a witness? Somebody shout, that's favor. That's favor. That's favor. And somebody is confused about favor because you are associating favor with material things. <laughs> but favor and blessings are not about material. Uh, the text says that Mary is favored because God is with her. The favor is God's presence. Y'all not here today. <laughs> When the psalmist says the Lord is our refuge and our strength, in other words, you'll get shelter in a storm, that's favor. When God protects you from your enemies, that's favor. When God gives you wisdom and clarity and peace in a storm, when God gives you a sense of direction, when he's your battle axe, when God is your banner and goes before you in battle, that's favor. When you got a sense of direction, when God makes your crooked ways straight, when you did everything to mess things up and some way somehow Ooh. tell your neighbor you you got favor when you're anchored in the midst of winds blowing that's favor this clause this clause the Lord is with you in this text is in the imperfect tense this is important, even if you failed grammar. The imperfect tense in the Greek is very important because it suggests a continuous action. So what it means is that it covers the past, the present, and the future. It literally translates to saying rejoice because the Lord has been with you the whole time. Rejoice, because the Lord is with you right now, and rejoice, because he's going to be with you. Mary's favor comes from the fact that she has been chosen to be the mother of Christ, even though she does not qualify it for it. She has not known a man, and yet God has chosen her nonetheless. God has a way of choosing whomever he wants to choose. Don't ever think, don't ever think that you lack the credentials, uh, that your cr lack of credentials exempt you from being chosen by God. God does not choose us and use us because of who we are. He chooses us despite who we are. Jacob was a cheater, but God used him. Peter was hot-tempered, but God used him. David had an affair. Noah got drunk. Jonah ran, out, ran from God. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was poor. Josiah was young. Miriam was a gossiper. Martha worried. Thomas touted. Sarah was barren. Joseph was a shepherd. Samson was a womanizer, Eliza was depressed, Moses was had a stammering tongue, Abraham was old, and yet God used them. That suggests to me that if God can use them, God can use you. <laughs> that if God could use David, uh, then God could use me. Uh, that despite our faults and our past and our failings and our shortcomings, uh, that God can still use uh, somebody like me. In fact, it seems uh, that sometimes our shortcomings uh, actually qualify us with God. Are y'all here today? It is in the context of discussing God's favor, God's grace, that God tells Paul in, in 2 Corinthians, my strength is made perfect 
in weakness. In other words, God wanted Paul to understand that it ain't about you, Paul. God uses our limitations as a part of our ministry. He'll use your low self-esteem to encourage somebody else. He'll use your broken family to help mend someone else's. He'll use your addiction to deliver your neighbor. Don't let people think that you, don't let people cause you to think that you have to have it all together to be used by God. You do not have to have it all together to be used by God. Those whom the world disqualifies, the Lord qualifies. Those whom the world counts out, the Lord counts in. Mary's favor not only manifests in God's presence, it also manifests in God's peace. Can the church say peace? The text says in verse 29 that when Mary saw the angel, she was afraid. She was worried. But the angel responds with the word that I believe the Lord is giving someone today. The angel says, fear not. In the face of that which is taunting, God says to us, don't be afraid. This is very important, church, because fear is the domain of Satan. When the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, it is in recognition of the fact that fear is the turf of the devil. It is, it, it is the domain of the enemy. Fear is how the enemy tries to get us to doubt God, to question what God has promised, and to undermine our sense of what is possible. Fear, whenever you're operating in fear, whenever you're operating in worry, whenever you are creating virtual circumstances that haven't even happened yet, well, what will happen tomorrow and what's going to happen next month when you are living in fear, uh, God understands that you are now potentially in the grips of the devil and God does not want us to take to be taken over by fear that is why there are 365 admonitions in scripture that tell us do not be afraid that's one for every day of the year when uncertainty is mounting in our lives God says to us what he says to Mary fear not when there's opposition and obstacles all around you, God says, fear not. When you've got more month at the end of your money, God says, fear not. When you've got bills on your table, when you've got a court case coming up next month, God says, fear not, because you cannot live in fear and in faith at the same time. <laughs> there is a movie called Faith Like a Potato. And it is set in South Africa. It's a movie about a struggling farmer who decides, decides to plant a crop of potatoes to try to bring in some money for his family. And when he did that, most people in his area thought he was crazy because it was during the dry season. The ground was dry and there was very little rainfall. And after some time had passed, the man decided one day to dig in the ground to see if any potatoes were there. And lo and behold, to everyone's surprise, he was able to harvest twice as many potatoes than everyone had expected. And when asked, how could this happen? How could it be that you could dig up so many potatoes when it is so dry outside. And he said in the movie that while everyone was looking for signs of rain above the ground, rain that they could see, water that was visible, he said there was water running beneath the surface of the ground. And so the seeds he had sown were being watered by water that they could not see. Y'all not here today. My point is that sometimes we get discouraged by what we see. We get discouraged by what we see with our eyes. But God says that I'm moving in places and I'm moving at times when you cannot see. And God is sometimes doing his best work 
but you may not be able to see it. Have I got a witness here? Don't be afraid because God is up to something. God is still moving in places where you can't see. Nudge your neighbor, say neighbor is still possible. And you'll know it's still possible when you get favor you cannot explain. But secondly, when the father does something unexpected, the angel tells Mary, She's going to give birth to something. She's going to give birth to the Messiah. It is a promise that God made to his people many generations before Mary, many millennia ago. And even though, church, it took a long time, God did not cancel his plan. The people of God had been hearing about the coming of the Messiah for thousands of years since first prophesied in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And thousands of years later, after 39 books of the Old Testament and countless prophecies about him and countless Christian exegesis on Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, there had been no sighting of the Savior until, y'all not here today, somebody say until. After all of that, after all of those issues, God sent an angel to let Mary know that after all of that, it was still going to happen. After the great flood, after the parting of the Red Sea, after Goliath was slain, the temple built and the temple destroyed, the kingdom formed and the kingdom divided, the Babylonian exile and the Jewish return. God, through his angel, comes to announce to them then and us now that what he planned, that what he orchestrated, that what he designed, that what he prophesied, that what he ordained, that what he put together, that what he had spoken was still going to come to pass. And I don't know what God has promised to some of you, but I came to tell you that it may have been delayed, but it is not denied. It may be on pause, but it is not postponed. It may be on hold, but it ain't over. So God says it's over. God is going to do just what he said. If you hang on in there and if you don't throw in the towel, he will come through. See, church, our timelines rarely match God's. It's why theologians tell us that there's a difference in scripture between Kairos time Kairos is the word for the Lord. Kairotic time is the Lord's time. And chronos time, that's human time, where we get chronology. Theologians tell us in scripture that there's a difference between chirotic time and chronological time. Uh, Y'all not here. Our grandparents used to say it this way. They used to say you cannot hurry God. That he may not come when you want him to come, but he'll be on time. The Bible is replete with people who had to wait on God's promises to occur. David was promised he would be a king, but he did not become king until 15 years later. Joseph was given a dream, but it didn't materialize until many years later. Abraham was promised a son, uh, but it didn't happen until he was 100. Daniel had to fast 21 days before he could get the help from the angel. The woman with an issue of blood bled for 12 years before she got healed. Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years before they walked into the promised land. It's difficult to wait. I get it. Inactivity is maddening. It makes us to feel that we don't matter. It is un makes us uneasy and it causes us to get angry and to lose a hope and to give up while we're waiting. And there are times when you can feel rejected by God by having to wait on him. But remember that special orders take time. Are y'all here today? Uh, it is like being asked to pull over when you go through the drive through at McDonald's because you just don't just want the quarter pounder that they've had sitting up there for a while. You want a new quarter pounder with fresh fries and whole the onions. You can get it, but you're going to have to pull over because it's a special order. Maybe you're waiting because what God has for you is a special order. The man, the job, the home, 
the light that God is trying to prepare for you is a special order. Have I got a witness here? God is preparing something special with your name on it. Have I got a witness here? And it might take longer, but it's on the way. Look at your neighbor and say it's on the way. God the Father is planning something for you, child of God, and it may take more time, but it's on the way. Can I tell you something? He may not come when you want him, but you want him when he comes. Have I got a witness here? What throws Mary off? What throws Mary off is that the miracle of conception occurs even though she's missing something, she asks, how can this be? Because I don't know a man, that's the cleanest way I can say it. In other words, she can't understand how God is going to do this because it defies her understanding of what's possible. And so what God does is that he sends her a sign to let her know that he is able to do that which exceeds what she thinks is possible. The angel says, Mary, in so many words, just in case you don't believe, I can't do the impossible for you. You got a cousin down there in Judah named Elizabeth. She is already six months pregnant down in here. And I'm sure, I'm sure when Mary heard that, she said, no way, there's no way. Not my old cousin Elizabeth, who's been barren all these years. Not, no, there's no way. Have you ever struggled with the impossible? Have you ever struggled with what God spoke to you and said, there's no way? Have you ever looked at situations in your life and said, that's impossible, no way. There's no way this can happen. There's no way this situation can be resolved. There's no way this relationship can be restored. There's no way I can overcome my past. There's no way I can quit drinking. There's no way I can heal emotionally. There's no way my loved one or my friend can be saved. There's no way. And the angel says, yes, that cousin, that situation that is in your verse, Vicinity. I am already moving over there. Have I got a witness here? And God confirms what he's going to do in Mary by showing what he's done for others. Point was that if God could do a miracle for Elizabeth, then God could perform a miracle for Mary. That's why the old saints used to say there's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do it for you. And I'm looking for some people who can look around you and see God moving in your neighborhood. The reason you ought to shout, the reason you ought to thank God when God is in your neighborhood is because you are next in line. Have I got a witness here? And rather than being jealous about what God is doing for your neighbor, you ought to have a sense of expectation that if God can heal them, he can heal me. Is there anybody in church today who can bless God? and say I'm next in line I'm next in line for a miracle you know it's still possible you know it's still possible when God gives you favor for the inexplicable you know it's still possible when the father gives you the unexpected but lastly you know it's still possible when you can have faith for the unseen Mary says in verse 38, let it be to me according to your word. Is that in your Bible? Let it be to me according to your word. In other words, Mary says, I may not understand it now, but I'm going to stand on the word that God gave me. I, Mary shows us that it can still happen when you stand on the word 
that God has given you. It's God's word that makes the impossible possible. She's not pregnant yet. She's not showing yet. She's not having any contractions yet. But she says by faith, it's already done. And God is looking for some people in here today who can stand and say, I may not have it yet, but I believe it's already done. Church, we walk by faith and not by sight. As people of faith, we see it by faith before we see it with our eyes and there are times there are times when I'm working on something at home and my children will come in and they will ask me to take them somewhere and I'll reply I'll take you when I'm all done and I notice something that invariably when I say that they immediately start getting their stuff together they don't know when I'll be ready. They don't know when I'll be done. But what they know is that I made them a promise. And because their daddy made them a promise, they can trust my word. Have I got a witness here? And I don't know what God has promised for you, but I don't care how long it has been. If God promised to heal you, he's going to heal you. If he promised to deliver you, he's going to deliver you. Is there anybody here today who can say it's already done? The miracle is already done. That's what gets me excited when I read this story. This story is about God's desire to birth something in the life of every child of God. We're reading this not because of what God did in Mary, but because of what God desires to do in you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1 that when the angel told Mary that, that, that she was going to give birth, she responded with joy. She magnified the Lord because she received a word from on high that God had a purpose and that God had a plan for her life. And so the message of this text and the message of this sermon is that God is still in the birthing business and that God is still moving that God is still working that God is still blessing and God is still transforming Mary is amazed because nothing like this had ever happened before and yet God was about to show up and God was about to show out in a life in such a way that would literally blow her mind and that's the reason we ought to get excited because God has the same proclamation for you and for me he's gonna do something that'll literally blow your mind have I got a witness and that's why the angel said that nothing shall be impossible with God have I got a witness here with God on your side nothing shall be impossible look at your neighbor and say neighbor is still possible you have come too far for you to give up right now it's still possible to the glory of God come on put your hands together many many years ago during the gold rush a man from Ohio traveled to California it had taken him many months to get there but he was so excited because of the claim that he could find gold and when he got there, he registered. He bought all the tools before he started mining. And this man uh, from Ohio started mining and digging for months looking for gold. But finally, after all of the hard work and finding nothing, he quit. He gave back the claim that he registered for and he put his tools down. He gave up. He was just plain tired and worn out and could not go any longer. He sold his claim and his equipment to the next man, and you know what that next man did? That next man resumed mining right where he left off. 
And when that second miner started digging, he was advised by a surveyor that there was gold only three feet away. And he started digging. The same spot where the first miner gave up, he was just three feet away. But he stopped digging. God wanted me to tell someone here today, it's still possible. But you've got to continue persevering. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. It is still possible with God for nothing shall be impossible with him to the glory of God. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Let's stand all across the building. On this second Sunday of Advent, God says he's spoken a promise into your life and you know that it's still possible when you've got favor for the inexplicable. When God, the Father does the unexpected and when you have faith for the unseen. After our first year of broadcasting weekly messages here on No Limits, it is clear that the most popular way to watch the program is through our free mobile app. If you already have the free No Limits mobile app, thank you for downloading. And I hope this app helps you each day in your walk with the Lord. And if you do not have the app, what are you waiting for? You can download this app for free right now from the App Store on either your Apple or Android device. This app contains the weekly message I preach, as well as free resources like a daily devotion and a Bible that contains a free reading plan. Before I go, let me ask you for a favor. Please tell all of your friends about the No Limits mobile app as we want to connect with more people and help them live a life with no limits. Learn more at delmancoats.org. That's delmancoats.org. Thank you for watching the message today, and I look forward to seeing you again right here next week for another episode of No Limits. I am so glad that you took the time to watch this message today. If you have been blessed by this outreach, I'd like to ask you to become a partner in this ministry so that together we can reach the world for Jesus Christ. My heart is to reach people just like you all around the world and to tell them that God loves them and wants to empower them to live a life with no limits. Your financial investment in this ministry will enable us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world so that more people can be inspired and encouraged. Will you help me to reach those people? Will you join me in empowering the lost and the forgotten? Will you be my partner as we teach people to truly live a life with no limits? To make a donation safely and securely, go to our website at delmancoats.org. That's delmancoats.org. And look for the donate button on the top right of the homepage. Thank you in advance for your support and for becoming a true partner in No Limits. Your partnership and financial gift will help us impact the world by bringing hope to those who need it. Your generosity today is a reminder of the goodness of God. Thank you again for watching No Limits with Pastor Delman. The preceding program was brought to you by the faithful supporters of No Limits and Mount Enon Baptist Church in Clinton, Maryland.